One of the pinnacles of keeping turtles. This is the alligator snapping turtle, guys. Look at that jaw. Incredible. Oh, look out. Oh, yeah. I told you. She get that camera. Now, careful now. Oh, we just learned a valuable lesson. Ah, uh, what's going on, everybody? We are at the big pond, and today we are looking for the Leviathan. We are trying to find Godzilla. That is the alligator snapping turtle that Tom Crutchfield gave to me. I've been seeing him around and I want to get hands on him because it's been almost a year since we got him and I want to see how he's doing in here. The cool thing is, is that he has been coming up, but it's a challenge to grab him because he is still a little wary. Uh, did that make any sense? A little, little wary, I was stuttering. But anyway, we're going to get ourselves a big gator snapper. So stick around. Sincerely thank all of you happy campers out there. Your support makes a real difference in our efforts here at Camp Kenneth. This week's shout out goes to Kenneth Buteau. Thank you for all you do and for loving reptiles. Hey guys, so I see one of the smaller snappers, um, gator snappers, so I'm gonna try for it. It's not as easy as you think, so hang tight. She's far out right now. Got her. Oh, oh wow. Oh look at this guys. Woo, oh, we haven't seen God. we haven't seen this in a while. Oh my god. Oh, I really wanted to get hands on this because oh my gosh, what a beautiful, beautiful turtle and one of the pinnacles of keeping turtles. This is the alligator snapping turtle, guys. Look at that jaw. Incredible. Oh look out! Oh, she'll damage that camera. Look out, guys. <laughs> this is incredible. Wild. So we do have these. two. We have two of these. Don't get caught, Matt. This is the first time Matt's seeing one of these. What do you think, Matt? These are incredible. Her mouth is huge. Yeah, now if you look inside that mouth, you're going to see a little extension of her tongue. And that's actually a lure. It's a worm-like appendage. Yeah, that. And that wiggles around while she remains hidden in the mud, looking just like a log or a rock. And what happens is- With her mouth open She like leaves that? her mouth open, man. Oh my God. Wiggles that around and then a the fish gets curious. Fish comes up, bam, really fast. She just slams shut that jaw and she gets her treat. She also likes pellets, fluker pellets that is, but she's gorgeous. Um, I'm really excited. Come over here. I wanted you to see this incredible, shell this shell is just gorgeous i mean it's got these three lines here with the keels a three keeled back or carapace the bigger these tortoises get or excuse me turtles the more um gnarled they get more algae uh and and look you can see look at this there's a little damage here she might have gotten bit by the male uh that's in here so we have a permit for the two of them you're no longer these are a federally protected species you have to have a special permit in order to keep them and i went through the process got the permit for these animals um it's just uh, uh basically tom crutchfield had these animals he's a good friend of mine he had them for many many years 
but did not really uh, needed to to get room for the new. Oh my gosh! Oh, oh my God! You're so big! I swear. Uh, wanted to make room for some new projects he's working on, and it was bittersweet for him. He was like really sad about uh, letting them go, but he felt better knowing that they were going to live in this huge pond. That we have a natural pond. They've been here for months now, and as you can see, uh, what I want to do. This is why I'm doing this. I can assess her. Like I said, we have a little damage here, but it's healing up nicely. These are just primitive and strong creatures. Uh, she seems like she's got nice weight. She's definitely heavy. Let's have a look at her carapace. You see this? She looks good underneath, okay? But they have that incredibly long tail. Okay, look at this long tail that they have. It's just like a dinosaur. Now they call this the alligator snapping turtle. I really don't know why. It doesn't look like an alligator to me. Perhaps they call it the gator snapper because it's just got jaws, powerful jaws, like a snap, like an alligator, right? We know that they have some of the best bite force in the animal kingdom, alligators. And uh, snapping turtles, they can bite pretty good too. Oh yeah, shit. I told you, she get that camera. Now careful now, now careful, let me do this. She's got the camera. Somebody went and got a little too close. Oh, we just learned a valuable lesson, didn't we, buddy? Hold on. <laughs> You're going handheld now. Are we still recording? <laughs> yeah. That is amazing. Uh, that's so the that ripped the camera right off the stick. Yeah, show them the stick. You show? Yeah. This is no yeah. longer useful. Yeah. Well, it just goes to show you. And it's funny. I was talking about jaw pressure, and that was definitely not planned. We did not want to sacrifice. Yeah, that was not what we planned. Oh at all. my gosh! Well, that just shows Matt's learning how to film these animals himself. They will go after whatever's in front of them. She feels threatened at the moment, and I I did pull her out to make the video, but I do need to do an assessment and make sure she's okay. Because since these animals are so cryptic, they hide all the time, it's not an animal that you see their whole body a lot of the times. So most of the time, when I'm throwing pellets out, I see their heads. And I know they're doing okay because they're moving around and they're eating, but it is very good for me to get hands on with this amazing animal uh, and make sure that she's in fact doing well. And I'd say with her spunk, uh, and her, you know, defensiveness. I wouldn't call it aggressiveness. Remember, she's defending herself. That's what those jaws are for. We in addition to catching prey, she's using those jaws to defend herself. She's calming down a little bit now. Um, we are just gonna hold her out here for a little bit longer. I want you to see the eyes on this animal. We'll kind of not go too close because we don't want you to lose a finger. We already lost the camera. Um, I can't believe we got it back. You did. And in fact, I think I think you could actually poke it right back in the end of that uh, yeah, yeah. rod if this you want. This is all good. You're fine? Yeah. Okay. But you so can see. Go ahead. You got a question? There's something in her mouth, like an opening right inside her mouth. That is... Right behind the little worm shape. Yeah, yeah. That's her trachea. That's, that's how she breathes. Mm -hmm. So what's really cool about these animals, they are aquatic, but they breathe air. Okay. All turtles breathe air. They can hold their breath for quite a long time. Um, an hour is pretty easy as long as they're not moving around. Um, but that trachea, why it's so good, uh, and it's got a little glottis that seals up, is it can breathe while it has food in its mouth if it needed to. So it's very difficult to choke a turtle like this and other lizards and and snakes have the, a similar setup reptiles are pretty good like that so they got that opening uh i, I just want to double check and look at it and make yeah that's exactly how she's breathing right now okay so it's pretty cool you see it just opens and closes when she needs to um so <clears throat> yeah um it's a it's a really good uh adaptation that their bodies have uh developed so that they can eat large prey but still breathe um, and they're watertight. So if her mouth is open underwater, you notice that that glottis, that, that it just kind of seals shut. So she can have her mouth open. She could be laying still. It could be an hour, maybe even two hours. And she can just hang tough and catch herself a fish. Can we see her bottom again? That's you want to see her bottom? Yeah, yeah, I saw it for a second. All right, buddy, I'm going to lift you up, sweetheart. With the, especially with the size of the tail and everything. But do you see, you notice what's neat. I want to show you something. Do you see the bottom of her jaw? When she bit into that camera, she actually nicked a little bit of her bottom jaw. Now I won't, I don't want to lose my finger, but now it's we're... right there. Um, oh, okay. Do you notice that? Yep. So again, okay. that's something that would happen in the wild if she were to grab onto, they, they eat mud turtles. Um, they'll crush through the shells of a turtle. So Look at that jaw. isn't it incredible? Oh my God. It's really incredible. I mean, this is just a beautiful animal. And you know, they're, they're quite, as far as being, look at this guys, that's part of the uh, camera. 
it snapped oh off. My God. It's part of the the um, the mount for the camera. So yeah, now you've learned a valuable lesson there, Matt. <laughs> Do not get too close to the animal's mouths. What are what are all the little pokers on the the neck? On the neck, those are tubercles. We call them tubercles. Um, there's a couple of different theories. The one theory is that, of course, it's camouflage. When she's in the water, they move around in the water, uh, and it kind of distracts fish. It could seem like algae. It's just kind of moving around like this. The other interesting thing is sometimes snapping turtles, since they live in really muddy, murky environments, um, they have other senses uh, besides their eyes to kind of tell where they're going. And so they'll have these little tubercles that are kind of hanging down off their neck and off their chin and they can actually feel their way through the mud and it acts as a way to maybe find something that's buried in the mud maybe they can find an eel or some kind of uh, you know uh, subterranean aquatic uh, animal to eat so they're always using these probes these animals if you think about it their whole bodies are tuned they're like a, a, a tool for reading their environment so they lay on the ground they feel low vibrations that's why I had to be very sneaky because they can feel my footsteps even into the water these animals are so far so much more dialed in to the environment than us clumsy human beings are or perhaps us human beings have divorced ourselves from nature that we've forgotten how to really listen to these sixth senses so it's pretty interesting when you see an animal like this that's been around gosh turtles have been around for about 200 to 300 million years in this basic form and when you look at a gator snapper doesn't it look like an animal that came right out of the cretaceous and that's only 65 million years ago turtles were old when tyrannosaurus rexes were roaming the countrysides incredible to know that turtles have been on earth for so long and this turtle the reason why it's federally protected is because these animals you can tell this is just a gal the males get even bigger and that's a lot of meat it's a lot of soup that can be made from one turtle. So uh, unfortunately, this animal in the past was hunted almost to extinction here in the United States, also being sent across the, the pond, the Pacific, to, to restaurants in China uh, where turtles are a delicacy, where they've eaten through most of their large turtles, and they've been looking to our snapping turtles as a new source for meat. So it's important that we conserve these animals. I do think it's important that there are permits placed on them. If you can meet the criteria, uh, we use these animals, as you see right now, education uh, we do different videos with these animals from time to time so it's important for us to get the word out uh, and to make sure that we're being good stewards of these animals and they're being good ambassadors for all of you out there who want to see such amazing creatures I'm just psyched I didn't think we were gonna be able to get even one but uh, the fact that we got her uh, and the fact that there is a male named Godzilla still in this pond somewhere is pretty incredible guys i don't think we're gonna get lucky today because once i jump in i scare all the turtles for a while so they wind up cruising away and making sure uh, that they don't get snatched up turtles are pretty smart and in fact one time i was focusing on a specific species of turtles that i had a lot of in the pond these these yellow belly sliders that we moved to another farm and i was only singling them out and guess what after about two days of catching those turtles the only turtles that would come in were, were they were uh, the the Asian pond turtles, some of the African mud turtles. None of the none of the yellow bellies would come in. So they are smarter. They're like, wait a minute, he's taking all our friends. I'm not going near that that human being. Uh, but you can see she's just settled down. Okay, so she's settled down. Is her mouth still open? Yeah. yeah. So that's what they do. Like out of the water. When I jumped in and I grabbed her, I actually didn't grab her the proper way. I grabbed her here. She did not try and turn to bite me. She actually tried to get away in the water. Snapping turtles are even more um, docile, believe it or not. Very rarely are you gonna get bit in the water with these turtles. I've stepped on gator snappers and regular snappers. They just try and get away. They don't lash out and bite you. But when you pull them out of the water is when they feel threatened. And clearly, this is not um, where she wants to be. She wants to be hidden. And again, she was just kind of nibbling on some flukers, tortoise, uh, uh, turtle food. And uh, my silly, I jump in. It's, it's like it's like being abducted by an alien. We're not going to do any kind of weird anal probes or anything like that today. But what's interesting is she was taken from her realm, brought out into my dimension, and uh, we're going to let her go back into hers. But this is just amazing. I love it, man. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you love seeing the gator snappers? Do you have any other questions, Matt? 
Yeah, just before you put her in, I want to see the bottom. That was Oh, incredible. yeah, you keep on wanting to see the bottom. And that's a really good point. Um, when we do lift her up, I will get there. I totally unique. I'm just, bottom. yeah, it is unique. And I'll, I'll, I'll get into why. And, and it's the same thing with regular snapping turtles. So the snapping turtles, the true snappers are found in North America. Um, the common snappers found all the way from Nova Scotia all the way down into actually northern South, uh, South America, if you can believe that. That's the common snapper. And then they go west to the Rocky Mountains. Uh, so they're a very wide ranging animal. This animal here, uh, there are different localities, but they're found uh, in parts of Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Illinois, Tennessee, uh, pretty much the Mississippi drainages and the panhandle of Florida, Alabama. Did I say Mississippi? I think I did. And also, uh, 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 up here uh, in Apalachicola region of Florida um, and into Georgia as well. My good friend Greg, uh, Dead Snake Greg uh, from Greg's Turtle Haven loves gator snappers and he's actually very knowledgeable on them and knowledgeable about the different localities. So snapping turtles, the true snappers, have a couple of things in common. This is Macroclemmys, okay? Uh, that's their genus, the alligator snappers. So it's macro, Macroclemmys, uh, Tamiki, I believe is how you pronounce it. Um, and that is the alligator snapping turtle. But you also have Chilidra serpentina, which is of course the common snapper. But one thing they both have is long tails, large carapace. The gator snapper has a short neck, but these large jaws, the a uh, common snapper has a long neck, which you wouldn't be able to pick up like this, okay? Don't try and pick up a regular snapping turtle like this, you'll lose a finger. But they also both have these incredibly reduced plastrons. And that's because most of the time, they are ambush predators, they're buried in the mud, so only their carapace is really sticking out. They're very aquatic, so rarely are they ever exposed underneath. Um, but it also, in my opinion, gives them to their kind of ornery, ornery nature in protecting themselves when they're on land. If they get flipped over, they are exposed. Uh, they can be eaten by a larger uh, animal. So they tend to kind of like to stay belly down in the water. And another really unique thing that they do is they turn their shell towards danger. They'll turn it like, like uh, the Spartans with their, their, their shields and then their, these mouths or their spears. So it's really incredible. But this is not Sparta. This is Camp Kennan. And this is our beautiful alligator snapper. She's a gorgeous gal. I'm so happy she's doing good. And I hope Tom, Tom, buddy, trust me, everyone's doing good in this pond. I just wanted to make sure you got to see how your kids are doing here at the camp. They got a quarter acre pond filled with fish. And to be honest, they're gonna get some small turtles, but you know what? They are the king and queen here at the camp in the large pond. So what do you say guys? Why don't we go ahead, let her out, and we'll let her mosey on back into the pond. I think it's been an exciting video. We had everything. We had high drama, we had sneakiness, we had cameras getting eaten, but we learned quite a bit. And most importantly, Matt learned a very valuable lesson because we don't want to lose any GoPros here. All right, everyone. Awesome day today. So excited we were able to get her on. Oh, I got a phone call now. But hey, I'll see you guys later. Go ahead and take care of that for me. I think it's my big brother. Yeah, big brother's in town. Anyway, we'll talk to you guys later. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, let me know what you thought of this beautiful gal in the comments below. And we're gonna just point her in the right direction. We'll give her a nice, whoa, watch this. Here's your ending shot, people. Go on, love, go on, love, you're good. Go on, you're good. Ooh, oh, oh, oh no, somersault right in. Oh my God. <laughs> Not the most graceful re-entry, but we'll take it. See you guys.